Hey everyone. The most difficult part of change that I found is getting to the root of what it is that needs to be changed and really focusing on that point because we tend to look at things in our environment changing and that being the way that we measure our change but also focus on that's the thing that we focus on in terms of what we want to change but we tend to miss the most difficult part which is why it's difficult because we tend to miss it and not consider it because the most difficult part is that you have to change and you hear that kind of thing a lot it's not like something new per se in terms of a statement but in terms of really understanding and, and focusing on it and it being the primary point it is really critical that we consider it because you know there's this point within all of us where we believe at some level that there's something higher than us something greater than us that is going to change things for us maybe not immediately maybe not in this lifetime but at some level at some point there's something else that's going to take responsibility for us having the experience or the life that we want or that we wish we had or something like that and it's a problem because we're all at some level participating in that and it presents the strongest barrier to changing yourself because there's points you're not willing to investigate or not willing to give up you know and it comes in the form of something like where it's like you say I don't want to do that I don't want to change that or I don't want to go through that or I don't want to experience that or I don't want to feel that but at the end of the day <clears throat> we are all individuals there is no greater power there is nothing higher than us um, now at the moment because we haven't accepted that that fact we're living as less than what we really could be and so we've created a scenario where there are things that are seemingly outside of our control that also dictate what we experience and how we live and so of course you can take your current experience as the evidence that you're not in control of your life and therefore you can continue to live from that starting point but when we all realize that actually individually we are determining what we experience collectively and then that comes back and experience and determines our individual experience there's power within that and within your own life it can be challenging because at the moment there's there's not a lot that you can direct in terms of the greater systems in this world and so there's a lot about your experience that it's difficult for as an individual for you to direct or you to affect but you have to start with just looking for yourself what are the things that I'm resistant to changing that I can change and usually it boils down to habits um, thought patterns uh, beliefs things like that you know you may not be able to change today um, how much money you make you may not be able to change today how other people respond to you and how other people perceive you and things like that um, but you can start looking at, okay, what is it that you accept about yourself? What is it that you accept fundamentally about the nature of reality? Do you believe that there is a higher power which is going to change everything? Because and you can't just immediately say, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe in things like that. Because you have to really examine all the layers of it. Because if you're not taking full responsibility for your life and then expanding to another level of responsibility and then expanding to another level and expanding to another level, then there is a point within you which... which accepts that there's something outside of you that <clears throat> either is going to make your life great or at some level you're going to escape from consequence um, and that could just be from your perspective you're not going to exist anymore you know but the reality is you're here you're here right now and so when when all is said and done what is it that you would really want do you want to just continue accepting less than what you're capable of who you are is that what you really want and what 
I've found within myself is even though I might at times answer yes, you know, I really don't want to, expect to take more responsibility or something like that. That's really not the actual case. There is that point within me where I do want to actually change and grow. It's just that it's difficult to see um, how that would happen or you feel too much inner resistance to the point and so you just immediately go with the the first point or the first thought which is that you don't actually want to change but what if you started just today by saying no I do want to change I am going to change I don't know how but I do want to and I don't even know what that change would be like but I want to change and then start asking yourself, well, what things would I do differently? What things, what small things would I do differently? Um, what's, what things would I stop accepting? Um, if you start from that point, you'll start coming up with lots of points and you might start immediately feeling resistance as well. And that's a good thing. Don't run away from the resistance. Just, just look at it, write it down, write what the resistances are, write them down. Um, even if it seems stupid, even if it seems crazy, just write it down so you can see on paper or on your computer screen, this is what's inside of me and these are the things that I need to change. Because if you're finding that you're still living the exact same life that you've been living for the past five, 10 years and nothing has really fundamentally changed, then it's really time for you to, to look at, okay, what what is it within me that's stopping me from doing the things I need to do to actually change and to change my environment now sometimes people have changes like for example they make more money or something but if you're at that point let's say you've over the past five or ten years you're making more money you know things seem to be going better in your life well ask yourself this is that where you want to stop and how much money is it that you want to make before you realize that you have a higher purpose than just making money, for example? So no matter at what point you're, you're at in life, um, especially if you have money, you know, the problem there is that you're very insulated from the problems in this world because money is the thing that insulates us from problems. That is the whole point of it. Um, but, you know, we were in Mexico recently and we were talking to our, uh, you know, the guy who was driving us to the airport. And we were asking him, how much do the people at the resorts make? And he said, the waiters and stuff make like $8 a day. The people who work on tips and the people who make, um, who work more on a salary basis, like the maintenance people where they're not going to get tips, they make like $25 a day, which is insane, you know? And he said they're working sometimes like 10, 12 hours. And you just don't really consider how The little things that we accept affect other people, you know, affect, and that comes back to affect ourselves. It comes back to us because, you know, and I was having a conversation with someone when we were in Mexico who said they wanted to be a billionaire, which is cool, but it's like, there's lots of billionaires, you know, and when you get to that point, is it really, does it really matter? Like once you're comfortable with that, then what, right? What would you do differently in that point? And so why not set yourself on the path of finding what is your highest purpose that you can set for yourself? And I think that's the biggest part of, the biggest block that people have within changing is not setting their purpose correctly. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm changing. But then what's the starting point of your change? Why are you changing? Changing to what? If you're just looking around at other people who you see as successful in this system, and you're saying, I want to change to that. Why do you admire that? And what is it that is being compromised by being in that position that they're in? And what is it that they're having to accept and that we're all having to collectively accept for a position like that to exist? Because usually what, the reason why we look up to people like billionaires and so forth, and we want that is because of the contrast between that versus the opposite end, which is like total fear of survival. And we believe that if we you know, have all that money and everything, we don't have to fear for survival anymore. But the reality is everybody's gonna die at some point. So why do you fear survival? These are like the real difficult parts to change within yourself. 
It's like, if you didn't fear for survival, what value would you place on being a billionaire then? And why would you want to be a billionaire? You know, and many people say, well, I want to change the world and that's why I want to be a billionaire. Well, why not focus on changing the world? Why focus on being a billionaire? Now, perhaps being a billionaire would be relevant to that. But did you consider that there's only like a thousand something billionaires and it is a very elite club and they're not going to just let you in just because you want to change the world because all of them got to that point and didn't change the world. So that should tell you something. So perhaps the way in which you become a billionaire matters and what you focus on. And some people don't have the goal of becoming a billionaire. Some people just have the goal of they want to be happy, but it's all the same thing. At the end of the day, everyone just wants to be happy. But we're not creating a world where everyone can be happy. You know, and for example, you know, people say, you know, like when you go to these third world countries, you're like, these people have no money and they're the happiest people. That is total bullshit. Um, you know, we were at this resort and the guy who was, you know, are like waiting on us quite often. And he started remembering, he remembered Max's name. So he'd always come up to us probably because I was giving him very good tips. And at the last day we were there that morning, um, we saw him and he asked us, you know, if we were leaving and so forth. And we told him, yeah. And he asked us how everything was and how we were doing. And I said, how are you doing? And he was like, this is a guy who, he spoke pretty decent English, but he was like, shitty. And I said, really? He said, yeah, man, I'm tired, really tired. And I said, yeah, I know, I understand. And I think he said something, I have to ask Katie exactly what he said, because I was walking away when he was talking to her. But he said something like, I'll see you again in another life, you know, and something about God and something being better in another life or something. I have to ask Katie exactly what it was, but I just kind of overheard a little bit because she made a comment afterwards about, you know, belief in God and how that can limit us and so forth. And um, it was really interesting because you see how the people in this world, the vast majority of people have a really shitty experience and we want to tune ourselves out to that. I know you watch the news and you see all this like fear porn and like disasters and all this stuff and they're hyping it up. Yeah, that a lot of that stuff is hyped up, but they're not talking about real problems, like the daily abuse and suffering that goes on. They're just talking about events that they know will trigger you to be afraid so you'll buy something. It's that's all just a bunch of bullshit mostly, you know. But the reality of the the average person daily living on this earth is is not good. And the reality of the average person who's got money is not good. We're not living our full potential. We're just going from experience to experience to experience. From the starting point of just finding another experience to make, keep making us happy. But if all of that was taken away, would you be happy? You know, and you have all these people who say like, I am a infinite creator and I am a divine being and all this stuff. But if you took away their money, they wouldn't be, you know, they, they would, they would be unhappy, you know, and, and there's a, there's a certain level where if you don't have food and you don't have shelter and you don't have, you can't be happy because that's the context of this physical reality. It's like, you can't be happy if you're a tree and you have no water, meaning you can't be your fullest expression because you'll die, right? And there's a level at which we all know this and that's why our focus is really on trying to survive. But we've accepted this self-deception of we're just here to get these experiences. But the only thing that that serves is the system that we've created, which is just designed to continue functioning and it requires energy to do that. And none of us have really questioned why that is. And the fact that all of our creative potential has been channeled into just this one activity, which is economic production, which is just the creation of money so that money can continue to run and fuel the system that we live in. And there's no real purpose or point to it. The, the purpose and point of our lives is not to live in our highest expression for every single person on this planet. Meaning like you could switch places freely with any person on this planet and you would be able to be your greatest expression. You wouldn't. When you, if you were to do that, you would see how limited you are. And if you really, if you really want to put it to the test, like, don't use any money for the next 24 hours or the next week. If you really want to put it to the test, don't use any money and see how your existence is. Don't use anything that requires money. 
um, for you to have. And you'll see very quickly, you're fucked, right? But the reality of most people on this planet is a daily struggle for money. And so the hardest point of change that I see really is us realizing and giving ourselves a real purpose, like not searching for a purpose, but giving ourselves a purpose. Like how much do you really need to investigate in this world before you realize like the whole thing is fucked, the whole system is fucked and we're, we have an opportunity to change it. And some of you may not be able to do that, but that's up for you to look at. I mean, some people may not be able to hear what I'm saying, but most likely if you're watching this and you have a moment <laughs> where you're not just looking for survival, you know, that means you have some time and space to be able to consider things. So I would suggest that you really start digging down deep and asking yourself, why are you accepting your life the way it is? And what are you accepting about yourself that's keeping you in that point? And why not drop your ego for a moment and realize that you can work together in a group and make a difference in this world? If you think it's all about yourself, you're screwed. And this the thing is like, we are all individuals and yet we have to work together as a group. So that gets inverted within us where we're like, either we're completely individual and we can do everything ourselves or we can do nothing as an individual at all whatsoever and therefore it's all up to this higher power. It's like one or the other. When the reality is it's both, like we are individuals and our individuality is a part of the whole, but the whole is just the sum total of all the individuals. It's not a thing in itself which is going to, um, at some point just take care of all of us unless we design it that way as individuals. And so we're in a unique moment in time where we can come together and work in a group and actually make a difference by changing the system. But that's gonna take time, it's gonna take a process. We have to really start challenging within ourselves those points where we are accepting that we're not ultimately responsible for ourselves. and. The, the most difficult point within it is when you, you look at your life and you're not happy with it and you realize that you're responsible and yet you don't want to take responsibility. That means there's some point within there where there's still a hope of something will change it. And there's some fear of some kind of experience you don't want to experience. There's some kind of feeling that you don't want to have or that you're chasing that you don't want to give up that search for But the real question is what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on changing? Are you focusing on doing that which you don't want to do but you know you should? Or are you focused on feelings? You know focusing on your feeling focusing on being positive for example is not the same thing as focusing on doing what you need to do Now it shouldn't feel bad but if you're just focused on how you feel, that's not like if you're, for example, doing something creative, you're really focused on the activity itself. You're not focused on how you feel. Generally, the feeling from that comes after you're reflecting on what you created. So if you're still focusing on how you feel as the indicator of what you should do or not do, you really haven't even taken the first step of, of change. You're still stuck in this like very immature state of, I don't wanna feel bad or I wanna feel good, which is like, you know, at the end of the day, when everybody has what they need, we will all feel good as a natural state of our existence. So let's focus on creating that and creating that state for ourselves as a result, rather than just trying to, because if you're just trying to get that feeling right now, but the system is the way it is, then you're really just having to accept abuse to get that feeling. So you're literally just abusing without realizing it perhaps. So that would be my suggestion is to look at what is it that I'm afraid of changing within myself? What is it that I'm afraid of taking responsibility for? What is it that I believe that is creating um, a perpetual state of inaction and fear within myself and a complete focus on how I feel as opposed to what am I doing? Because if you're afraid of looking at what you're doing, it's because you know, you know that there's a point within you where you could be doing things differently. But again, the focus is on the feeling. There will be a period, however long it is for you, where you have to walk through constantly feeling bad, feeling good, feeling bad. But that's just a part of it. And it'll take time to walk through those cycles 
but you have to remain focused on why you're here and what you're here to do and can constantly push yourself to do what you know is best. And for some of you, you may not know what to do, but that's why I make these videos from time to time is so you can see another way out, another thing that you could focus on because we have a way to change the system. And it's through education initially, and then it's through politics and so forth. And I've made videos about that, and I'll make, continue to make videos in the future. And I'm not the only one. We have a large group of people who are working together and walking their own individual processes so that we can create a group of people so self-directive on this planet that nothing can stop us or prevent us from changing the system so that it's best for everybody because it's not gonna change on its own. It's not designed to produce that outcome at the moment. And those that are benefiting from it the most have no desire or intention to ever change that. They may not even at this moment be able to conceive of it being different because they're so um, embedded within it and as it. So for those who see any point within themselves where things should be different, then you have to hear what I'm saying. You have to stand up now. And if you're not sure what to do, then you should send me a message and ask me Right? And it may not make complete sense, right? But we have ways and, and we've been able to watch ourselves and others actually really change and become a different person with a different starting point. It doesn't mean that you are gonna suddenly disappear and someone else is, you know, it's like, and that's the fear, isn't it? That fear of not existing, right? That fear of not being in control. And yet it's that fear that actually makes it so that we don't really exist here and we don't really have any control over anything. And we're just watching experience unfold until we eventually inevitably die. So if you want to experience life for real with all of its challenges and pain and joy and enjoyment, right? Because it's really about the enjoyment in the moment. It's not about creating some inner dialogue of joy <laughs> or some like, like perpetual bliss state. Like that could be possible, right? But it's certainly not going to be possible for you only when it's not available for most. So let's rather focus on creating the conditions where it would be even possible for all. And then we would be able to see what's possible, right? Instead of looking at it as, how can I get joy for myself right now? How can I just enjoy the process of changing myself and pushing through my fears and my limitations and doing what's best? And if you don't know what to do, send me a message and let's chat about it because we have now proven that people can change using the tools, the processes, et cetera, that we've been using and that we've been sharing and that others have been using and sharing, we know it is possible to change. But again, the most difficult part is that you have to change. No, no tool is going to change you for you. It is simply a tool of support for you to become aware of what needs to be changed and to make the changes from the perspective of seeing what needs to be changed, but you still have to walk through and actually change the point yourself. That's the most difficult part, is that you actually have to change it. You actually have to do something different in the moment. The tools that we share make it doable, right? Without those tools, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, uh, it's just a fantasy. So if you have the tools and you're not using them, then you, that's why I'm making this video is for those. Um, but for those who don't have the tools that I'm talking about, you may not even know what I'm talking about, just send me a message or put a comment below and I'll, and I'll share them with you, okay? All right, we'll leave it at that for today. See you next time.